My name is Juan Saiful Ranjan, uh, in short, one, I'm Chief Executive of the Institute for Democracy and Economic Affairs, Ideas in Malaysia. Uh, my role today is simply to uh, MC the program, basically making sure people keep on time and that you sit down on time, listen attentively, uh, but most of the sessions will be uh, done by the moderators. Um, I want to firstly uh, welcome you and welcome everyone to the Economic Freedom Network Asia Conference 2014 with the theme Liberalism Promoting Growth Reducing Inequality. This is actually, uh, well, very recently, two years ago, if I remember correctly, uh, the conference was held here in Hong Kong, and I'm really glad that we are here again. It is a beautiful uh, place, beautiful Hong Kong. This is actually my first time here, I missed the last one. And I'm really glad to see you know, that it's actually a very uh, big audience this time. Uh, as you already know, the uh, co-organizers of this conference is Lion Rock Institute, the Economic Freedom Network Asia, and the Frederick Norman Foundation for Freedom. And the conference is also supported by the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, CARP, and Liberal International. And uh, many people from CARP uh, will be joining us tomorrow. The theme cannot be more appropriate at a time when the whole world is discussing about inequality. So I'm not going to take uh, too much uh, time now. What I'm going to do immediately now is to invite Bill Stacy, who is chairman of Lion Rock Institute. Uh, Bill Stacy is the chairman of Hong Kong's leading free market think tank, Lion Rock Institute. He is on the board of advisors of the Mankal Economic Education Foundation in Australia and has been involved in advocacy and market reform for the last 25 years. Uh, you can read the rest of the, the bioreactor in the pad that has been handed over to you, but can I invite Bill to the stage? Thank you very much, uh, Juan. Welcome to, uh, welcome to Hong Kong this time, and, and welcome to everyone to, to Hong Kong, and welcome back to, um, to, to many of you who were here for the, the same event two years ago and Hong Kong being really a centre of the region. I'm sure many of you have visited Hong Kong um, uh, in the past and, and, and regularly. It's a particularly interesting time, obviously, to be in Hong Kong at the moment, and you know, the issues of this conference are, are being um, uh, debated um, in Hong Kong very actively. Um, I'd like to, having thank you for attending, also um, thank Frederick Nauman Foundation um, who are really instrumental in bringing this together um, in organising um, the Economic Freedom Network um, across Asia, which is just so vital for, for those um, involved in free market think tanks, advocacy and policy work around the region um, to, to keep in touch, to help us um, to, uh, to collaborate together and to spark um, new ideas and an exchange of ideas and to generate the mar market of ideas in, in the region. So um, thank you Sigrid for your work and, and the work of your team in, in, in hosting um, this event with us. Um, the uh, issues in Hong Kong at the moment are really particularly interesting and uh, my uh, daughter goes to a school where the headmaster has a PhD in experiential learning and he says that you know, there is no better way to learn than by doing. And, and so on the streets of Hong Kong just down there, you can gain an experience um, in uh, you know, political debate and, uh, and policy making on the streets that is uh, very active uh, at the moment by reading the newspapers, um, by watching the media in Hong Kong, I think you can get a flavour um, for the central debates um, around the theme of the conference, um, liberalism, promoting growth um, and uh, reducing inequality in, in a way that uh, at, at other times you, you simply might not. Um, and I think you know, there is a, there's a caricature of, of Hong Kong that uh, has been encouraged by The Economist magazine and others that, that perhaps this is not a centre of free enterprise um, but of crony capitalism um, and a small number of people um, uh, sort of pulling the strings and ruling behind the scenes. And, and I think what you see in practice is you can't do that with 7 million people um, in a small city. You know, individuals um, have to get on and have to cooperate and, and even in the extremities of a big debate that had 200,000 people on the streets uh, and very vigorous responses from both sides of that debate, 
uh, in Hong Kong, there has been um, a degree of uh, sophistication, civility, um, and seriousness about a debate about the future of Hong Kong that, that I think many of us here would find um, very encouraging. So we have some um, key themes, I think, at this conference that will be interesting to explore in that context. Okay. Is there a trade-off between uh, the economic growth that um, produced much of the physical infrastructure around us um, and freedom? And I think many of us would emphatically say no, um, that the two are uh, um, uh, related in a very integral way. Um, there's been a suggestion that uh, earlier generations um, in Hong Kong that uh, helped to produce this prosperity did so at the cost of stepping back and, um, uh, and letting political freedoms um, uh, take a back seat. Um, and this type of issue is um, worthy of debate. And again, I would say that um, you know, the earlier generation here, um, I do not think value freedom any less than the generation that is more prominent on the streets. So in uh, Asia today, I think we do understand, have a very good sense of what is required to generate um, the growth that makes everyone um, prosperous. That uh, more productivity is essential to people um, being paid more, generating more wealth for others, serving people better. But productivity does require um, capital and requires institutions that are friendly to capital. Um, that the institutions that are friendly to capital are also the institutions that protect very fundamental liberties um, and personal freedoms. That the rule of law is an integral part um, uh, of those institutions and that there are indeed many different forms of the rule of law, all of which can be um, helpful and that with legal competition um, uh, can, uh, can further our freedoms. The accountability of those um, who, who claim to, to govern us is absolutely critical um, to ensuring the protection of those freedoms over time and, and that the free flow of information that we still do have today in Hong Kong, despite very genuine threats to that free flow of information, it is again one of the most essential protections of the, the freedoms that we value. I think we should um, uh, remember that uh, liberalism has thought very carefully about the issues of equality. And for liberals, equality is typically not an end in itself. Um, and certainly not even primarily about the issues of economics and wealth that it often gets, uh, uh, is aligned with. Um, it would seem to me that um, the Gini coefficient um, talks only about the very narrowest and smallest areas of equality that matter. Um, and is very unhelpful to the debate about um, equality. Um, as Hayek has said, there is all the difference in the world between treating people equally and attempting to make them equal. Whilst the first is the condition of a free society, the second means, as de Tocqueville describes it, a new form of servitude. Hayek also confronts very head-on key issues about values that are, are worthy of our discussion here when he says, we must face the fact that the preservation of individual freedom is incompatible with the full satisfaction of our views on distributive justice. When he says our views, I'm not sure which our is meant in context, um, uh, but that issue um, of freedom and some ideas of distributive justice is central to uh, the discussions that we'll have and the broader discussions we'll have um, uh, when uh, our friends from Powell join us tomorrow, I'm sure. So I think all of these are vital issues for us to discuss um, over the next few days. Um, many people do value equality in some form, but I think there is a risk that we allow this to trump um, more vital core liberal values um, and uh, threaten um, our fundamental freedoms and liberties. And with that, I'd like to um, hand over to uh, Siegfried and hope that we have a very um, productive session today. Thank you. So, as uh, Bill just said, uh, let us now welcome uh, Siegfried Herzog, Regional Director of the Norman Foundation for Freedom, Southeast and East Asia. Uh, Ziggy was previously the Regional Director, the Foundation's country 
sorry, was previously heading the Foundation's country office in Manila from 2006 to 2010, and then the regional office in New Delhi as the regional director for South Asia, and now he's based in Bangkok. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Ben Seifel. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of freedom, on behalf of the Friedrich Lama Foundation for Freedom, I would also like to welcome you to the EFN Asia Conference 2014. And as many of you know, this is now this has now become a long-established tradition. This conference. This is already the 16th conference of the Economic Freedom Network Asia. So it is. Um, quite a tradition to uphold. It's the first conference for me as regional director for Southeast and East Asia, but I've participated in many of the previous conferences, as have many of you, and um, this has always been a valued part of my, uh, of my calendar, uh, an enriching experience, and I hope we can continue this. We have come to Hong Kong at a special moment in time, in many ways. We've come at the invitation of our partner Lionhawk Institute. And I would like to thank Lionhawk Institute and led by Bill Stacey for inviting us and making this event possible with, with your team. I think the cooperation between our offices has been has been excellent and we look forward to a good joint event. We are especially honored that we can celebrate the tenth anniversary of Lionhawk Institute together. Because the date was chosen at the request of Lionel to celebrate the anniversary. Now, as we all know, when you celebrate your anniversary, you do that with friends and family. So we are very honored that Lionel decided that uh, we should be the ones to celebrate with them. So we are touched and honored, and we are happy to celebrate this evening with you. Another important partner in this, of course, is the Fraser Institute, the original motivation for the conference has been and continues to be also to present the annual Economic Freedom of the World Report, to popularize it in Asia, to um, make use of it in our work in the different countries of Asia, to really show, demonstrate that economic freedom works. That is not just something that we believe because Hayek said so, uh, or some other prophet of freedom, uh, but that it is borne out by the data. That uh, the freer a country is, the more positive outcomes it has on the economic side, but even on the on the social side. Um, and Fraser has done a sterling work in meticulously compiling the data, being transparent about it, um, and it has thus given a great service to the to the argument for freedom all over the world. So thank you very much, Fred McMahon, for the work that Fraser has been doing all these years, for being with us today and for continuing the tradition of presenting the EFW report 2014 this evening. We have also managed to organize a second conference after this one that will overlap with this one, namely a conference of our partner CALT, the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, an alliance of Asian parties, together with Liberal International, the worldwide alliance of liberal parties. And the benefit of having these events back to back and overlapping is that it gives us a chance to communicate our ideas, our insights to political leaders from the region and from around the world. Um, because this debate and this interchange is something that is both needed and often not happening or not happening to a sufficient degree that political leaders take on board ideas coming from research, from academe, from think tanks, um, and conversely that they talk about the limitations that they face in terms of communicating these ideas effectively in the political arena. So we are glad that we, had, that we have this opportunity and we I would encourage all of you to make, to make the most of it uh, to strengthen this, uh, this interface. And of course that we have such a joint event in Hong Kong has turned out to be um, a, very, a very fortunate coincidence. Because when we planned it, of course, we didn't know that, uh, um, that Hong Kong would erupt in a furious debate about its political future, uh, its institutional future. But it, it is indeed 
now um, a good symbolic place for both of these issues. Because Hong Kong, of course, has a genius Loki, um, a very spirit of the place when it comes to economic freedom. It's always one of the two top um, countries in economic freedom. It has shown an amazing transformation. It has shown what economic freedom can do to a place. It has set an example for China as a whole. Um, and therefore, this is always a place where you look around and you see, yeah, freedom works. And it's, it's an exciting place. It's a, uh, it's a place that I feel always inspired by. But at present also, it is engaged in this political debate, in this debate about what is the freedom of, um, of Hong Kong going to be like, um, to what extent will it retain its autonomy, its freedom, its, uh, and the integrity of its institutions. Because quite apart from the, from the worry about who determines the chief executive, uh, there's a deeper, a deeper issue, and that is to what extent are we allowed to have autonomous institutions that are free from political interference, uh, that can work professionally and autonomously. And such institutions are really the hallmark of a, of a free and of an open society. Institutions that treat you according to set, to set rules, and that make those decisions on the basis of rules and of competence and not of political dictates. So this autonomy of, of institutions, of rules, of really the rule of law against political interference is I think what is at, at stake here at heart. That is why people are, are most worried about. Um, and the fight over the political issue is just sort of the, the proximate cause for the, for the deeper issue. Lastly, our topic, of course, is liberalism, promoting growth, reducing inequality. We've chosen the topic because there's a renewed debate worldwide in academic and political circles about inequality, to what extent it is rising, if it is rising, and why it is rising, and um, what should be done about it. And these are questions that um, liberals have to confront. The left, of course, um, has always been concerned about inequality in the sense of inequality of outcomes. Um, that finds it very hard to live with unequal outcomes, unequal distributions, um, and it's probably tapping into some, something very deep in our, can say, social DNA, uh, if you believe in um, evolutionary explanations that probably our social DNA harks back to the Stone Age where we lived in tribal bands with no property and hence um, equal living circumstances. Now we don't want to go back to the Stone Age, but we somehow still seem to emotionally uh, dream of that, that sort of um, that sort of society um, where everybody looks the same and everybody has the same. And so it, it seems to be a very powerful ideal um, emo at an emotional level, because otherwise it's hard to understand why the idea is, is still gaining currency after socialism has failed in country after country after country after country. And therefore, it is something we, that probably will not go away, that we will continue to have to um, confront. Um, there are, of course, also serious issues um, that globalization has given probably disproportionate success to some people who are suddenly able to play on the world stage and reap benefits not just from a home market but, but from a global market. So this gives you returns to scale that were unimaginable before. Um, we also have to look at issues um, where people have started to gain the system um, and where people who got economically successful use their money power to gain the system and exclude others. So keeping markets open, keeping competition vibrant is also a challenge for us, which also means restraining, uh, restraining private players in trying to gain the system, trying to subvert the rules. And this is certainly especially a debate uh, in the financial markets. What the right response is, there we can, we can discuss whether it's regulation, whether it's uh, better structure of competition. But these are certainly serious issues that we, that we will have to face. And we have to think about issues of social mobility. How do we ensure that uh, when we treat people equally, we also give them uh, equal access to opportunities, especially to education, uh, to rights, that they can compete. So these are issues, I think, when we talk about inequality that, uh, that are there that we need to face seriously. And for that, such a conference 
as this one I think is, is very important. Because many of us work in circumstances, in countries, in societies where they are decided minority, where the intellectual discourse is dominated by the left, by other forces or by simply misinformed thinking. Um, and then you often struggle as a minority of one, of a small group, um, and you sometimes also struggle to find responses and ideas to all the issues that come up. So such a conference is also very useful to network, to get new ideas, uh, to learn how other people confront the same, the same problems, the same challenges, um, and you can come back, as I often did after these conferences, with a sense of intellectual enrichment and reinvigoration for our cause. This, at this conference, we, have, we are very fortunate to have an excellent keynote speaker, Rasim Zali, who I look forward to listening to, who has thought deeply about these issues and who will set the tone of our conference that we will debate subsequently. Uh, we will also debate it with a focus on different countries in the format of the Asian World Cafe that we give most of you a chance also to reflect on these ideas in the context of your own situation and sharing with others what the, what the situation, what the challenge of inequality looks like in the various countries of Asia. Therefore, I look forward to an interesting conference. I wish us all an enriching conference, good meetings, intellectual nourishment, and renewed friendships. Thank you very much.